Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Classroom 2.0 Live show. And Happy New Year. This is Saturday, the 11th of January. And today's topic is Inspiring Middle School Literacy with Carolyn Jacobs, um, the show hosts are Peggy George, me, Lori Moffitt, and Tammy Moore, who's doing closed <laughs> captioning. Thank you, Tammy, for the closed captioning. This is the live binder for today's show. And the important thing to note is that all of the pages, all the tabs in the live binder run on the left-hand column. And Peggy's already put the live binder link into the chat. All of the information for today's show and past shows are in the archives and resources page. And the link is on the slide. Peggy will post that link. That's where the recordings are posted. Uh, the chat log goes in there. Both recordings, both video and audio, go in there. Uh, so that's an important resource. We'd like to find out where in the world our audience logs in from. I am logging in from central Pennsylvania. I know Tammy's in southwest Arkansas. Peggy's logging in from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, use the second icon down in the whiteboard tools palette, and that will give you a, a pointer. Looks like most of the people that are using the pointer are logging in from the United States. Usually we get a an international audience, but today it looks like mostly in the, in the US. Oh, we do have uh, someone logging in from Argentina. That's always fun to find out where people are coming in from. We're going to start with the polling questions. And I'm going to change the polling type first. And if your answer is other or s, type that other answer in chat. The first question that you're asked to answer is, what's your role in education? Are you A, an administrator, whether building, district, or region? B, teacher, instructor, or professor? C, parent, leader? D, district, campus technology leader? E, state, providence leaders, or board member? And F, the other one, that, that, that last choice says we don't have F on the, on the list. Just put that into the chat. And once we have people who have voted, I will publish those answers to the whiteboard. OK, from those that voted, most are teachers or instructors or professors. We do have a few in other categories, but that's what most of our audience is right now. I'm going to switch that to the other type that we use traditionally. Again, if you didn't get the vote in the last question, the tool is this check mark at the very end underneath your name in bold at the top of the participants list. This will not work for your question. So do you teach middle school students range of grades from 5 to 8? But again, I will publish that to the whiteboard. And our group is split, half do and half don't. Our next question, polling question two, after I clear 
let me clear those re responses first. Have you used PBS Learning Media either personally or with your students? This one's either yes or no again. And again, I'll publish those to the whiteboard. And here we've got a little, almost half have used PBS Learning Media. Our, la our, our next polling question, have you registered on PBS Learning Media? Again, yes or no. Green check for yes, red X for no. And I'll publish these to the whiteboard. And we have almost half again that have registered. Our fourth question is streaming me media in your classroom possible? Again, it's yes or no with the uh, polling choices, green check for yes, red X for no. Yeah, if you don't have a classroom, this question obviously doesn't apply to you. And I'll publish these. And for those that vote, that voted, um, it's all yes. Streaming me media is possible in, in classrooms. So again, welcome to today's show. The topic today is inspiring middle school literacy. And I would like to introduce our special guest, Carolyn Jacobs, who is the Senior Manager for Training and Educator Engagement at WGBH Education and is thrilled to be living the dream, helping teachers discover all the free stuff that public media produces. WGBH produces of NOVA and American Experience is public television's preeminent production house, the source of one third of all primetime programming on PBS and the leading producer of content presented on PBS.org, the most heavily trafficked non-commercial website in the world. WGBH Education is now recognized as one of the nation's leading producers of media-based resources to support teaching and learning. Prior to joining WGBH in 2005, Carolyn founded and managed Chicago Parent News Magazine, a regional publication that lives at chicagoparent.com, and Business English Consultants, a corporate language training company. Carolyn earned a BA from Temple University and an MED in reading from University of New Hampshire. So the newbie question that we always ask our guests is here, Carolyn, what is PBS Learning Media? And then you can take over the, from here. Great. Thank you very much. And I assume everyone can hear me. Um, so are people asked to respond to the question, or um, is that kind of the kickoff to my presentation? OK, great, wonderful. You can hear me, and we'll get started. Well, thank you very much to Classroom 2.0 and all the um, wonderful folks here. We've gotten to know each other um, remotely. I don't think we've ever met in person. Maybe we bumped into each other at conferences. But um, thank you for this opportunity to talk to folks from uh, actually all over the world um, through a whole different um, way than we typically do. We do run a lot of webinars, and often we're running them from WGBH. So it's nice to have a, a wonderful partner here in Classroom 2.0. Um, 
Okay, so the question, what is PBS Learning Media? We're going to go into a very brief overview of it, um, but very simply, it's a platform. It's a partnership between, w, between PBS and WGBH, launched a couple of years ago, and it's a, it's a library of resources that are mostly drawn from public media. And um, uh, predictably, because it's based on public media, it is free, free to everyone, anywhere, anytime. So today we're going to do a little bit of overview of the platform, and that will lead us into the conversation about middle school literacy, because what I'm going to show you about middle school literacy lives on PBS Learning Media. We'll also, um, we have a couple of opportunities um, at the end. Um, one of them is to participate in a brief survey and win an iPad, and then we also have a, a little sneak peek at some other uh, content that's coming on the site. As I mentioned, PBS Learning Media, and, and just to, um, so I don't trip over my words too much, I'm going to abbreviate it and just call it LM for the purposes of our um, conversation today. Uh, it was launched a couple of years ago. It is a partnership between PBS and WGBH, and it is our commitment to support educators in and outside of the classroom, enhance learning, and empower students. We are now at uh, 35,000 plus resources and counting. We started at 10,000 a couple of years ago, can, so you can see we've had quite an exponential growth, and we're continuing to do that. We add content every month. So we encourage you, if you visited us um, a while ago and for some reason you didn't find exactly what you were looking for, keep coming back because lots more content is coming on the site. This is a screenshot of the home page. And when you log on to LM, um, you will be redirected to a local site based on your zip code. And if you are international, you will remain on the national site that looks just like this. Um, the reason you're redirected is because all of the local stations around the country, of which there are 100 plus, are offering this service to their teachers locally. And so the home page is branded with a local station, so your color scheme or your logo might look a little different, but the content is identical. So no matter which site's home page you are accessing the content from, you have access to all the same content. On the home page, you can search through the topic window up in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, you can also search by brand. So if you're interested in finding resources just from NOVA or NOVA Science Now or Between the Lions, whatever. Um, right in the center where you see the daily news story, that's what we call our feature well. And we feature uh, six or seven resources around a theme that changes um, every week or so. And of course, you can just click on any of those pictures and go right to a resource page so, of what we're featuring. On the right-hand side, you can see that there are announcements, uh, the new and notable section, and so there's a lot of information right there on the home page. And below the feature well, um, where we have the um, expanded browsing options on the home page, you can uh, filter your search by grade level, subject, do a reverse search by standard, um, content collections, etc. For any of you who have already, um, are already PBS LM users, um, if you have any comments about uh, what you like, what we should improve on the site, I'm very interested in those comments. So, uh, we gather them, I need to report on them, so I'm always asking educators, um, administrators, anyone involved in education to give us feedback about what they like and what they would like us to improve on on the site. And believe me, we take your uh, feedback very, very seriously. 
I mentioned on the previous slide that below that feature well, you can uh, search by grade level, subject, standard, etc., and you see that there. And then this is just another example of um, a different feature well. This was around, um, what was this around? Oh, all the world's your stage. It was around uh, the arts and drama resources that we have. When you find resources that you like, you can save them, uh, organize them in folders, share them with your colleagues. I haven't really told you a little bit about what the kinds of things you will find. Uh, the, the main highlight of the site are short clips. Now we know that teachers do not have the opportunity to play half hour or hour long programs. So uh, many of the resources on the site are short clips that are drawn from full length programs. So if you imagine um, an hour long American experience program on the um, Civil Rights March or um, or on Lincoln, or one of the NOVA programs, we very carefully edit uh, typically one to five minute clips and make them available on the site contextualized with lesson plans, background essays, discussion questions, etc. So a large part of the content on the site are short clips drawn from public media programs. Also on the site, you will find um, interactives, PDF documents, audio files, etc. And you'll also find um, media that is drawn from our partners. We work with all of the public media stations around the country, many of whom do very fine local productions and national productions, WNET out of New York, KQED in San Francisco as an example. And then we also work with very esteemed organizations like NASA, Smithsonian, Library of Congress, etc. And we're working towards giving um, everyone who we work with one place to showcase their content and give te make teachers' lives a little simpler so that you're going to one place uh, for free, vetted, high-quality content. Another way to search on the site is if you go on, again on the home page, uh, we have curated groups of resources into what we call collections. And these collections um, are typically around um, a, a topic or a curriculum theme or a brand or whatever. So there are lots of different kinds of collections. But it's one of our ways to make it easy for you to find a group of resources quickly. Um, so if you go on the home page to browse all collections, you can start to see the vast array of collections. And I thought I would give you um, an idea of just a couple of examples of what you'll find in the collections. So here are some uh, banners. We typically, our collections have very attractive banners at the top of the page. And then you will see anywhere from five to a hundred resources listed through links under the banner with a brief description so you have an idea of what you'll be looking at. Um, I picked these out, uh, first of all, the poetry in Shakespeare because um, this is a, um, has a literacy theme to it, the Sportings Program. And um, so Poetry Everywhere is a wonderful collection of uh, poets who are, um, uh, who are current are reading their own work and poets of the past. Uh, we have some very famous um, actors and actresses reading their work. Um, short poems, again, lesson plans, discussion questions, etc. Shakespeare Uncovered is um, a collection that is drawn from the production called Shakespeare Uncovered out of WNET. Uh, short clips, again, lots of teaching support materials. And it, these are not full broadcasts of the plays, but instead they're broadcast um, actors who are playing these um, well-known roles of Hamlet or Macbeth, etc. And the actors talk about their, their role and how they felt about playing it. And they're, 
very entertaining. And if you are in touch with any um, middle or high school teachers who teach Shakespeare, uh, they may already know about this, but um, help us spread the word. And the two at the top, I'm going to spend a minute talking about the NGSS engineering on the next slide. But Math at the Core is a, um, a collection that is growing right now. It, it has been launched. You will see Math at the Core banner under the collections um, on LM. There are, um, I don't know, Erica, Erica, who works with me, is on the line. She may be able to put in the chat box how many are already loaded. But there will eventually be, by the end of this school year, 400 plus resources specifically for middle school math with lots of interactives and game-like activities. Um, so we're very proud. That is a, um, a a partnership with Corporation for Public Broadcasting, CPB, and we're working with a, a group of uh, public media stations around the country. Um, and so the, co the content is coming from lots of places, and WGBH is doing some of the production and then the coordination. Okay, and uh, teaching NGSS engineering design through media is the newest kid on the block, and we're very proud of this. This is a brand new collection that just was loaded to the site. And um, as many of you may know, there are new next-gen science standards that were um, announced last spring, I believe, and are being adopted by many states. Teachers um, need a little help in understanding what these next-gen science standards mean. Uh, in particular, we are addressing the need in engineering. Engineering is now required to be taught as its own subject, not as kind of a PS to science. So engineering design um, K through 12 has new standards. And through a collaboration between WGBH, the Museum of Science in Boston that has um, the elementary, excuse me, engineering is elementary program with funding by Raytheon, uh, we've created a what I think is um, a very rich collection for teachers to help you um, navigate through the new standards and also to in, involve your students in very highly entertaining um, activities and really instill in them the idea that engineering is um, quite um, an exciting field and, um, and kind of dispel some of the misconceptions that we have of engineers. Um, we hear a lot about misconceptions about engineering and engineers, and I, I've heard a few, but I'm interested in what you think. Um, when you think about an engineer or what an engineer does, why don't you put in the chat box what your um, idea of that is, uh, what they spend their time on, what they look like, maybe what their strengths are. Curious about what you think about that. Yeah, innovative thinkers, design inventions, yep, solve problems. Do you, do you see engineering as kind of a solitary or a collaborative um, discipline? <laughs> yeah, and I often think of engineers as being poor spellers. Uh, my father was... Um, a civil engineer, and the story in my family was always that my mother uh, had to write his papers in order for him to get through graduate school because uh, writing was a little weak. Collaborative, yeah, absolutely. Problem solvers, really um, an exciting field. Okay, so um, back on the collections that you'll find on learning media, um, one of the collections that um, we're going to spend some time on is, is the Inspiring Middle School Literacy Collection. And, and this is just a screenshot of what it looks like if you search through collections and English language arts and literacy right here. You can also find it um, 
we'll put the uh, URL in the chat box and it, it's spread around some of these slides also you can go directly to the collection with the URL maybe Erica will add that to the chat box and um, and then also if you put in the topic window inspire middle school literacy you'll find the collection that way also so the uh, the collection page has this purple banner. This is um, the Inspiring Middle School Literacy Collection uh, was produced by WGBH uh, with funding from the Walmart Foundation. And the whole collection is available, of course, on uh, PBS Learning Media. And um, down on the bottom of that slide, uh, the end of the URL is missing. It's, it's a collection slash midlit. M-I-D-L-I-T, which is our in-house abbreviation for middle school literacy. The collection is a group of 40 lessons uh, originally designed for students in grades 5 through 8, but we hear all the time from teachers in lower and higher grades about their um, applicability. And the lessons are really designed to support literacy strategies at the same time um, teaching a highly engaging topic in one of the four major subject areas. The lessons use videos, interactive activities, note-taking, reading, and essay writing. They're research-based, classroom-tested, mapped to the Common Core. And the lessons cover topics such as, in science, uh, plate tectonics, energy, uh, Newton's law. Uh, the science is also science and health. And we have a lesson on nutrition and also a lesson on concussions. In social studies, there are lessons on immigration, civil rights, the Constitution, ancient, um, the ancient pyramids. In mathematics, lessons on multiplying fractions, ratio and proportional reasoning, and in English language arts, um, personification, character development, etc. And we're going to be looking closely at a lesson in the ELA category on personification in just a minute. I want to pause here and make sure that I haven't missed any questions in the chat box. Um, we're about to uh, watch a short video clip. This introduces the whole collection. It's about a minute long. Um, it is available on YouTube. And we did rehearse playing it, and, it's, and it played really well. So um, uh, uh, when you're watching this video clip, I want you to pay particular attention to the frozen frog video that the kids are watching. And we'll talk a little bit about, more about that in a minute. OK, so if you were able to catch that little glimpse of the frozen frog video, um, that is part of a lesson on adaptation in the science category. And the frozen frog video you can watch outside of the lesson on um, learning media. Just put frozen frog in the topic uh, window and you'll see it. And um, it's pretty remarkable and something that um, I think anybody who watches it is fascinated by it. Does anyone have an idea what a frozen frog is all about and where they emanate from? Curious? They have nothing to do with um, frogs that, um, frozen frogs that you might buy in the grocery store. Polar vortex, yeah, well, we've had frogs before, frozen frogs before the vortex. Don't they sleep in the mud over the winter? Um, yeah, sort of. Yep, they do. Yeah, frozen, uh, the frogs, it's a North American wood frog. And they actually freeze over the winter um, and thaw in the spring from the inside out. So there's a, some um, kind of chemical is produced in their body like an antifreeze. And in this video, you watch them slowly come to life. Um, it's pretty remarkable. 
Okay, back to literacy. These are um, literacy strategies um, thanks to the NCTE, the National Council of Teachers of English. These are the strategies that we know successful middle school students need to employ. And this is the list from which we are working when we created all of these lessons. So each of the lessons is going to draw on these literacy strategies at the same time the student is interacting with content. Each of the lessons has a teacher's guide specific to that lesson. You will find that on the link right here below the lesson, uh, on the lesson page for teachers. And then you can download the teacher's guide right there. The standards tab is also right on the uh, resource page. And um, these lessons, uh, when, when I um, run sessions like this, teachers always remark about how perfect they are for the new Common Core state standards. Um, the students will be reading rigorous informational text, short text appropriate for their grade level. Um, they will also be interacting with domain-specific vocabulary. And they will also be asked, it's just a couple of the Common Core standards that uh, make sense here. They're also asked to um, watch uh, media and decide, uh, pull out important information, synthesize that information, and, to, and draw their own conclusions and present their own um, point of view. All good things. This is what the, uh, this is a screenshot of the first page of the Cowbird lesson. All right, so this, we're in the ELA section, personification cowbirds. I'm curious, uh, who knows something about cowbirds? What makes cowbirds particularly interesting? Why don't you put that in the chat box? Um, so a student, these lessons are, the student is one-to-one -one with the computer, and they are simply clicking through these tabs at the bottom that you see 1 through 11 and then the final assignment. Um, and the teacher is in the background acting as a mentor or facilitator. Um, the student is working through the screens on their own, saving their work as they go um, through. So we have, Maureen, are they the ones that take over other birds' nests? Yes, they do. And so when you have uh, kind of a homely brown bird taking over the nest of a songbird, um, start to think about how personification may play a role in this. Each of the lessons is organized just the same way as this. So once you see the way this one works, you'll have a handle on all of them. We start with a very, um, what we hope is a high interest photo. And then, of course, we are trying, we're introducing the topic and activating some prior knowledge uh, right here. And here, we're, we're asking the students to think about um, personification and some words that they use to describe inanimate objects or um, living things that are non-human like animals and uh, plants. So why don't you give us in the chat box a couple of um, uh, persona examples of personification um, like my car refused to start or um, whatever. Right here we have my car refused to start, the flowers dance in the sun. What are some other ideas about personification? The objective of each lesson is stated on the second screen, and here the students read a brief summary that defines personification as a literary device and are then told what they will learn about personification through a story that presents facts about the brown-headed cowbirds and their nesting features, their nesting habits, excuse me. Screen three, um, the goals are defined and the students will take note of the literacy strategies that we are 
um, stressing and practicing. And in this case, it's making inferences, determining important information, comparing and contrasting, constructing summaries, etc. Note down at the bottom these six vocabulary words. These are all linked to definitions. They are going to be um, reinforced and practiced throughout the lesson and assessed at the end. So domain-specific vocabulary, literacy strategies, and the goal of the lesson are right here on the screen. Oh, excuse me, I just wanted to show you here. Yeah, this is what the uh, pop-up of the definition looks like, personification. All right, so we did have some people who said that, yeah, someone suggested that the um, cowbirds are, um, uh, that they take over other, other birds' nests, and they do take over the songbirds' nests, um, and we're going to get into a little bit more about how that happens. All right, so on this screen, uh, we are introduced to the cowbird, and there is a one-minute, uh, four-second video clip and then the students are asked to react to the video and type their reaction in the chat in the box on the screen and then save their notes. So um, my behind the scenes people, um, if we could play that video clip now, that would be great. Okay, um, I hope that you were able to see that. Um, if not, you certainly can go to the site. And then I think the link to this is also posted um, in the uh, live binder. Yes, live binder. I forgot the word. Yes. All right, so we are at screen four of the lesson. By the way, these lessons take about uh, one to two class periods. And in this screen, um, we are watching another video clip that shows how the scientist uh, named Jeff Hoover, uh, it, he decided to create an experiment where he removed cowbirds bird eggs from the warbler nests, only to discover that the warbler eggs in the nest were later destroyed. So that created a little mystery about how that is happening. And at the end of the video, it suggested that the cowbirds destroyed the eggs out of revenge. Another use of uh, personification. Um, on this slide, you see that the arrow in the upper right-hand side says, review my work. Um, as soon as the student starts to save work, uh, they can, um, this review my work pops up. And when you click on that, you will see a pop-up window of the whole summary of all the work that that you've done throughout the lesson. And um, the student can print that out. Um, they can share it with their teachers in a variety of ways. So this is um, review my work right here. And this is what the review my work um, looks like. And you can see that uh, in this example, Cynthia Warner was the student, and she has saved some notes and also her responses to um, some of the assessment questions. Um, okay, here on this screen, uh, we are at screen six, and we're, um, we're referring to the videos that we've just seen, and we're now looking at personification as the main objective of the lesson, and thinking about how we use personification as a literary device, and how it makes a story more interesting. Um, some stories could be pretty boring if we don't use personification. Helps us um, connect with the topic. Here, the learners are, or the students are again determining what's important information while they are reading and also watching a video that shows Jeff Hoover's experiment to create warbler nests that the cowbirds cannot enter. Um, which is pretty uh, creative. He does create this box around nests with a particular size hole that will not let 
the Calbert in. And um, you'll, you'll see the results of the experiment when you see the lesson. Here the students are checking their understanding of what they've learned so far by answering three multiple choice questions. Um, the students uh, see whether or not they have answered the questions correctly, but they cannot change their answers. On this screen, the students make inferences from reading a short PDF informational text describing personification and its uses in fiction and nonfiction. Um, it's also good practice for students to open an electronic document, provide a short summary on the screen, uh, write that in the type your text here box, and then save their work. Even the whole activity of uh, writing on screen, saving work, advancing to the next slide, um, teachers tell me that they, um, that's good practice for their students. The students complete a vocabulary activity here. Remember those six vocabulary words that we are um, stressing for, throughout the lesson? So they are, um, it's, there's a match it where you click and drag the word into the appropriate sentence, and then you're also asked to write a couple of sentences of your own. This is um, Compare It, an, uh, the last assessment. And in this, the students are asked to look at um, a variety of sentences. What you see on the screen is antelope are most active in the morning. And decide if that's an example of personification or objective description to drive home the point about exactly what personification is. The last screen is the final assignment. We always give students a choice of one or two, um, excuse me, or two of three. Um, a choice of one would not be a choice, I guess. And the final assignment is done offline. Um, and of course, is optional. Rubrics for grading the final assignment are included in the teacher's guide. And here is the example of the final assignment right here and um, also the standards right here. All right, I want to very quickly uh, flip through a second lesson just to uh, show you how the organization uh, is now familiar to you. And this is a totally different le kind of lesson. This is from the social studies category um, or section. It's the story of Pocahontas. And in this lesson, the students are asked to um, think about uh, what their idea is about Pocahontas and where their perception of Pocahontas came from, uh, if it came from popular media or if it came from reading a book or someone telling a story or whatever. And um, so we're introduced to the myth of Pocahontas, again, the vocabulary words and the goals for the lesson. And then we're also introduced to the um, legend and the historical version. Um, meeting the key players, Chief Powhatan, Captain John Smith, Pocahontas, etc. So this is really a great lesson, not only for social studies, but also media literacy where you're asking the students to think carefully about what they are viewing, what the intent of the author is, um, what the impression is left with, and raises all kinds of questions about how we're portraying this um, woman historical figure. Same thing, match it, uh, compare it, and the final assignment. Okay, uh, we're winding down. I have a few more things to tell you about. Um, let's see. I wanted to, uh, this is the URL for the main site, pbslearningmedia.org. Um, we know that sometimes registering students um, can be a little cumbersome. And um, we do have a way to easily set up accounts for students um, that does not require using their email address. 
instead we have a different uh, protocol and there's um, that's explained on the site in the section about helpless student accounts but more than that since we are very intent on helping you use these lessons and get feedback from you um, if you have a class that you would like help with, we will set up accounts for your students ourselves. And we do that through this um, email box, midlit at wgbh.org. So we monitor that pretty carefully. Sometimes I forget for a couple of days, but uh, midlit at wgbh.org. And if for some reason you're not getting a response, you email me directly. Um, and we will help you set up the um, student accounts. All right, here is um, a very easy way for you to participate in a contest. Uh, just a few questions we're asking in a survey. Here's the link. And um, I think this is also posted in the live binder. We will be doing a second drawing. We did one in November, and there was a winner, um, a teacher from Arizona who won an iPad. And we'll be doing a second one on March 15th. Um, or excuse me, the, um, con the survey ends on March 15th. It will take a few days after that. Uh, and this is all being managed by an outside firm, and they contact you if you're the winner, and you verify that you are, in fact, over 21, and you're a teacher, blah, blah, blah. Um, so please uh, go to the survey. Um, we don't typically have tons of people doing this, so your chances of winning are pretty darn good. Okay, in case you have uh, more time for webinars uh, or if you would just like to watch the recordings, I wanted to let you know about a couple that are coming up soon that we're involved with. Uh, we are running a webinar this week um, in collaboration with EdWeb, uh, which is a teacher community. Um, on the webinar will be Jane Porath, who is a board member of the NCTM. National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, and also a middle school math teacher. And she is going to really uh, dig deep into literacy in the mathematics classroom and will showcase one of the math um, inspiring middle school literacy lessons. It's the one on, um, uh, what is it called, time travel, or I can't remember the name of it right now. But uh, we're going to be uh, going through one of the math lessons. And then later in February, uh, we have another, um, this is in a series of three webinars with EdWeb called Flipped Lit. And we'll be showcasing there uh, or featuring there a English language arts middle school teacher um, who is a, really a pioneer in the flipped classroom. And he, will, he wants to really concentrate on the middle school literacy lesson about Anne Frank. So those are two things that are coming up soon. Um, I want to throw a question out to you. And this is, I'm, I'm really serious about uh, getting your feedback. Um, it's very important to us. It will inform new development. We are um, right now looking very seriously at creating new lessons similar to what you saw, where the student walks through different screens themselves. But the lessons would be around um, a STEM career. And they would have a heavy writing component and be um, probably appropriate for mostly for eighth graders as they're thinking about careers and making decisions about what uh, courses to take in high school. So what I'm interested in knowing, and please give me as much feedback as you can in the chat box, is first of all, if um, career development or career awareness is taught in your school, if you know of that, and if so, what grade and maybe what subject area. And then the second part of the question would be, if if there were a group of this type of literacy lesson available around STEM careers, uh, again, a heavy writing component, um, is that something that you think would be of interest to um, your teachers or you as a teacher? So any comments you have about that, I will pass them along to the right people. And I appreciate you giving that some consideration. 
All right, we are, um, I think we wound up right on time here. We have a few more minutes and I'm um, open for questions and uh, feedback from you and I really appreciate this opportunity. So thank you very much. Thank you, Carolyn. I did catch your questions, but um, they were already answered as we went along, so I don't have any new questions. Are the lessons accessible to sensory challenge students? That's a good question, Nikki. Um, let's see. Well, um, I'm sorry, you, I want you to, to uh, define sensory challenge, please. Students that need screen readers or uh, the, the uh, closed cap captioning that we provide with this vision loss is what Nikki typed in, visual okay. hearing, cha hearing challenged. Yeah, 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 okay. Um, the videos are all captioned and um, but there is no audio available for the readings or for what you see on screen. That is something that we are, um, will be in new development where um, the readings will have an audio feature. But the captioning of the videos right now is there. Yes, I saw that on the, the uh, Cowbird video. Yeah. I did yeah. see another question. I think this is for the student accounts. Um, if you choose not to use the email help for the accounts, yes. you have to set up a, a CSV file for students and what headers are needed for that file. Yeah, uh, there right now there is no way to upload, um, do any kind of bulk upload and to set up student accounts. So what, I f what teachers tell me is the easiest way to do this. Um, the um, protocol is that you can set up, when you, when you elect student or learner and you're setting up an account, you're asked to choose the role and, and we call students learners. Mm -hmm. And then the system allows you then to create an email address with the suffix at pbslm.org. So it's a um, really a bogus email, but it, it satisfies the requirement that we use some kind of email for, um, for the account registration. Mm -hmm. So um, if your um, student's name is uh, Sue Smith, and you want to instruct her to set up the account as smith at pbslm.org, something like that. And then all of your students can use the same um, password. So if for any reason the teacher wants to log on as a student to see their work that way, um, it's easy for you to remember that they all have the same password. So I, I like the idea of walking the students through setting up their accounts, a very simple process in the beginning before they access the lessons, um, or uh, do it ahead of time, um, or we will do it for you and send you a spreadsheet with their um, sign-on names and, and a password. Good, thank you. I did see another question, and this had to do with making lessons compatible with iPads. Any idea when that's going to be ready? Yeah, the um, the interact the flash interactives uh, are the problem with mm -hmm. iPads right now, and uh, unfortunately, I don't have any firm uh, timing for that. It's something that we hear a lot. We are working on it. It it just has it's it's the old story of funding and manpower um, to make them compatible. So um, all I can say is stay tuned right now. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Could you explain again how teachers bookmark favorites on the LM site? Sure. Uh, when you find a resource, um, there's a little star that appears either in the search results next to the name of the resource or on the resource page itself up at the top and you click on that star and then your resources will appear under the favorites tab. 
So at the top of the screen is favorites is one thing. I think it's next to profile. And um, so your favorites are populated um, into a holding place called favorites. And then from that place, you can create folders and move resources into specific folders and then decide if you want to share them with students or teachers. Mm -hmm. Do you know whether or not the Flash interactives work with the Puffin browser? Um, I have heard a rumor that they do. Okay. Um, I think Puffin is a, I believe Puffin is a commercial product. Um, so it, we don't, um, we can't officially endorse it. Right. Um, but I, uh, that is a rumor I've heard. So um, I'd love to hear more if people know more about that. Now someone just typed download and pay 99 cents for the browser. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone else have any other questions? I've been reading them from chat as we've gone along here. Well, Puffin yeah, does have a free version. The link's in there. Yeah. Um, I would just encourage folks to um, let me know further or through your site where you keep the conversation going um, about their reaction or experience in using the lessons. Mm -hmm. um, we have ongoing uh, research surveys going on where we like to be in touch with teachers after they've had a chance to implement the lessons. And uh, we have an evaluator who's doing that. Um, there is a um, a little incentive of a, a gift card and it's just spending a few minutes on the phone with our evaluator to give us some feedback. All of this, you know, we really need to talk to teachers as we move further uh, ahead on development. So if that's something that you can help us out with, just let me know. Great, thanks. Uh, Peggy has posted the survey for the iPad drawing too, that link. Great. So thank you, Carolyn. I'm going to go ahead and close the show with the thank you very much for everyone. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, the upcoming shows for Classroom 2.0 Live are on this slide. We have a show on January 18th, Adam Bello with Edu Clipper and Ed, Edu Tecker. And there is no show on January 25th because of the EduCon Philly that weekend. This is a slide for a webinar for personalized learning with Barbara Bray and Kathleen McClaskey. Um, it's a January 21st the Motivation Equation webinar. Steve Hargadon is taking a break from the Future of Education interviews, but he'll return soon. You can always nominate a featured teacher, and the form is on this slide, tinyurl.com, CR20Live, Featured Teacher Nominate, but without the E at the end. Peggy pasted that URL in the chat as well. You can also nominate yourself for featured teacher. So you can fill out the form to nominate somebody else, or you can nominate yourself. When you exit the Classroom 2.0 Live room, you'll, you ought to be taken to the survey page. The oh, oh, also Peggy's posted the EduCon Philly website. You can also participate virtually there as well. This is the survey link for the live show, the Saturday shows. Uh, the link's in the chat box. The link also now is in the live binder. So any live binder that you look at will have the survey link. Be sure when you fill that out if you want the professional development certificate, which is this slide, that um, you make sure the email address is uh, a non-school one. Some school email addresses will block the certificate from arriving to you. So make sure you double check on the email that you use to request the survey. 
the shows available in a video collection or an audio collection through live our iTunes U. And that's also accessible from the archive and resources page. So you can get past recordings in numerous formats, both video and audio. Um, the RSS feed is another way to get the weekly show archive. That's on the Classroom 2.0 Live page, which is a Weebly. So special thanks today to Carolyn Jacobs, our, our special guest, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and Web 2.0 Labs project, to Weebly.com for providing the site, and everyone who participated in the show, as well as to Blackboard Collaborate for providing the platform in which, which we use. Again, thank you all for coming. <laughs>